I've learned everything that I know from somewhere. It's just, you know, when you live as long as I've lived, you got more of a, you got more stories. And so <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to start out by saying, you know, we're talking about some of the pests that, that uh, attack our horses and our dogs and, and ourselves, like when we're having that barbecue on summer evening out by the lake and the mosquitoes are eating us up and so on. What do you do? You know, what, what is it that uh, will allow that, uh, that entices that mosquito to eat on one person, but the person right next to him is hardly being bothered. And uh, so that's kind of what we're, we're going to uh, talk about that today a little bit. Um, when I was in, when I had my rodeo company years ago, it was probably in 1982 or something, uh, I used to keep my horses out on, on big country. And uh, I went and gathered them in <clears throat> one time to take some to, to, to get them ready to go to some rodeos. And uh, I noticed that my horses was just matted with lice on their, on their sides of their necks and underneath their chest. And, and I, I got one of them where I could reach him and I, I pulled, I looked at them and there's about the size of a head of a pin. And oh my gosh, it's really, what the heck? I mean, they'd pick these up in the sagebrush pastures and stuff. And I, I didn't know what, what to do with it. I thought, golly, I'm going to have to spray all those horses down with some kind of chemical. And I hated the thoughts of that. And anyway, there's an old man that he was still riding colts uh, at 82 years old. I don't know, Joseph, if you remember that guy, Sam was his name, and he'd ride them colts. He always wore shoes and a flat derby hat. And, and anyway, Sam was kind of one of those old boys that kind of spanned the generation before me. And I, I, I asked him, I said, what do you do to get rid of them lice on them horses? He said, I'll just sweat them up. He said, them lice will jump off of them like they're on the Titanic. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, just sweat them up. So I, rather than going buying a bunch of chemicals and spraying on them, I just kicked the gate open on them horses and, and took them on a lope around the 1200 acre pasture and sweated everything up. And just like he said, every one of those horses was, was <laughs> cleaned up from the lice and just virtually overnight. And so uh, I've learned from other people. It's not that I know anything or, you know, I've just learned by experience. And so that's one of the things that, that I'd pass on to those that might be listening, that if you have lice on your horses, uh, that, that's one way of doing it. We've got, a, we offer a product that's a bug repellent and it's made up of some different uh, essential oils. And it's a well-known fact that some, some plants as they grow, bugs don't like being around them. I don't know if any of you planted a garden or anything, but if you, if you plant uh, thyme, thyme, uh, however you prefer to say it, or uh, um, what some of the others, oh, marigolds, they're marigold flower. You can plant them every little ways all the way around your garden. The bugs virtually will not come in your garden. And, and it's because I don't know if they just find it that offensive or, or what the deal is, but you know, we did it last year at our garden here at, at our place and, and virtually no, no insects bothered our, our, our fruits and vegetables. So there's some things that's pretty simple, uh, easy to do that are absolute fact. And, uh, you know, you've heard me say this before, but when God built this, this whole thing, he put everything we needed here for us. And it's just a matter of uh, knowing what that is and accessing it. And it works way better than anything man's ever come up with. And so I'm telling you that when you, when you get the right essential oils, and an essential oil is simply the pure oil that's extracted out of certain plants. And you take those oils and you put them together and then them bugs just flat don't like them. And in fact, some of them are absolutely uh, uh, lethal when that insect comes in contact with them. And uh, then uh, I guess it was last winter before last, I went down to Arizona and I had a water hose running from the water hydrant to one of my trailers there. 
and I noticed it was a white hose and I noticed a little black line that was moving on that hose and I, I looked at it closer and it was a bumper to bumper crop of, of uh, piss ants, if you will, them little bitty ants crawling up that hose. Green so I photo spot, maybe. I'm sorry, what? Go, go ahead, Dad. She was she was unmuted. Anyway, uh, I noticed. I, I looked closer, and it was these piss ants. And I thought, well, where are they going? So I looked, and they'd found an access into my trailer. They had found a box of frosted mini wheats, and them things that ate almost all of those frosted mini wheats. But there was a steady line all the way from the pantry in that trailer, clear out side, uh, probably fifty feet. And uh, I went and got the, our fly spray that we use on our horses, and I sprayed that, and then them ants died without taking another step. There was a black line that was dead on that hose all the way, and uh, inside the pantry and so on. I put that in there, and and it stopped. I mean, they, it didn't discourage them; it killed them on contact. And I've done some different tests and so on with that. Uh, stuff and i've got some this concentrate that we that we sell you you add water to that but if you was to take that in its concentrated form and you put an uh if you had a tick on you for instance and you put a uh, like a q-tip a cotton swab in that and then just touch that that tick with it and just kind of painted the tick with it they will back out and usually die within minutes but they back out first because they're looking for relief and so it's just a, a really cool way to do it uh, there's no no way that uh that injection site then is going to be contaminated because it's it's a clean uh escape uh in this country where we live and this is something that wasn't where i was raised but they've got what they call buffalo gnats. And they're about, oh, I don't know, they're probably uh, the size of a, a little smaller than a mosquito, but they're fatter, they're wider. And they get on the inside of these horses' ears and on their chest, uh, on the undercarriage of their, their throat latch, underneath their, their jaws, and up on between their hind legs and their, their belly. And just, uh, they're vicious. They're, you know, I've had them. I've had them bite me before, and they they demand your attention immediately. But anyway, they fill up with blood, and you, you can wipe your hand across their belly a lot of times, and, and your hand will just be black from the gnats and red from the blood. And uh, you can take just a little bit of this salve that we make, this Equa salve. It's got some essential oils in it too, and I just put a little bit of it on my thumb, just just what I, I, I don't scoop it out of there. I just rub my thumb on it and then take that and just rub it up the inside of them horses ears. And it keeps them, them gnats out of their ears for three or four days. Uh, also, I'll put a little on my hands, just rub it on my hands and rub it down their neck and, and across their, you know, it's, it's just e real easy to, to apply. And it's because it's oily, it stays longer. And so uh, that's a really good way to handle that what we call buffalo gnats or any of these gnats that are kind of like uh, hanging around and so on. And then uh, obviously we have the fly spray and that fly spray does a really good job on, on flies around their faces, the house flies and so on. But I'll, I'll just kind of hesitate for a second on that subject. And, and that is uh, flies are attracted to certain uh, animals that are exuding what they like to eat. And, and that is uh, uh, usually an indication that there's an infection in that animal. And so if you see one, one horse or one dog that's got lots of uh, flies hanging around it, uh, I, I, I simply give it something to uh, get rid of the infection, which our number 25 INFX does a great job that way. But, uh, these flies are attracted. They're, they're not attracted because that horse is prettier. They're, they're attracted to that, that animal, no matter what it is, cow, horse, dog, sheep, 
any of them, the ones that attract the most flies are the ones that are uh, exuding what the fly likes to eat. And, and that's usually uh, uh, your infectious, uh, your infections and so on. So anyway, uh, that that's some of the things that, that I look for there. Um, uh, let me see if I got something else that I wanna, uh, mites that get in dogs, get on dogs and horses, uh, mange, it's commonly known. If, if you spray some of this fly spray, it doesn't have to be in this concentrated form even it's, you know the instruction is to mix that contents with some water and if you mix it and shake it up uh spray that on the site and then also uh give that that animal some of our uh herbal wormer then you you will pretty much eradicate from the inside out the the mites you know, you're actually attacking them from two different directions you're externally and internally but the the mange will just go away um uh one of the other things i was going to mention was uh scratches on horses a lot of times uh respond really well to our salve as well uh, but internally if you want to give them on, get them on the immune support that'll get rid of that too so um now i want to go into a, a little story about uh years ago when i was i was uh, corresponding a lot with dr marvin kane i wrote an article uh i noticed in, in my observation that horse flies only work the top portion of that horse they work the you know the mane of course they don't penetrate because the mane's so thick but then they get down around the withers and the fly flicker response moves them there. So they go on back a little farther. The fly flicker response uh, uh, goes away back there, farther back it goes, but the tail can pick them up and, and brush them off and so on. And so finally, they can find a spot somewhere over the top of the hips, right in the middle of the back where the, where the tail will jump over and they can't, they, there's no fly flicker response, but there's a spot right there where that fly can finally land and and bite the horse. And so the horse, it, it's uncomfortable enough that the horse has to turn clear around and, and move that fly with his, with his lips, or they have to drop on the ground and roll. I've seen them do all of the above, but uh, I was mentioned that to Dr. Marvin Kane, and he said, and he thought for a minute in his analytical way. And he says, Mac, he says, you reckon that horse could be, or that fly could be performing the same performance for our horses as the honeybee is for our flowers and our blossoming plants. And I, th I thought, I thought that was ingenious that he would think about that. Now, when I was around him, there's a spot right directly over the top of the hip bones, right on the middle of the back. And uh, they call that in Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine names that uh, Bao Wei, B-A-U-W-E-I, Bao Wei. And that is the center of that horse's energy. And so uh, Dr. Kane would draw blood out of the main line and inject it in that bow way and then whatever corresponding acupressure points that ac that corresponded with the, the issue he was dealing with. And so, but he always included bow way. And, and so when he, when he mentioned that, I realized that that's exactly where that fly was trying to reach. And he was moved everywhere else except right there. That's the only place he could land where the tail wouldn't move him. Fly flick response is not, not there. Uh, and so I thought that the horse was, you know, all these chiropractic moves, the horse was performing on his own because of that fly. So I had made, I had made that comment. And so when he made that comment, I thought, holy heck, <laughs> made me feel bad about all the nasty little things I've done to horse flies through the years. And he says, yeah, I know. He says, uh, but that's what happened when two people thinking about the same subject got together talking about it you know, more light was shed on it. And so, you know, this knowledge comes and this understanding comes as you're looking for it, as, as you're open to learning it. And so 
uh, once again, kudos to those who's on this Zoom call, uh, especially week after week, because there's so much that we can learn and there's so much that we can teach other people if other people are willing to learn. Uh, and so anyway, I gained a new appreciation for what that fly's job was. Now, it wasn't too long after that, I had a horse that I just couldn't quite get him to clean up and shine up like I thought I, he should look. And <clears throat> these horse flies one day was just after him. There was two or three of them and they was all worrying him and he was, he was not even paying attention to his feed. He was sw swishing his tail and jumping and kicking with his hind end and shaking his head and trying to reach back there and just, and they just finally wore him out and, and had their way with him. And within just a few days after that, I mean, they was only there for two or three days and then they was gone. And it wasn't long after that, that horse brightened up and got and cleaned up and, and really, really got to looking good. And I, so I've kind of watched this through the years and I've seen it. In fact, I've got a video somewhere that I took of one dining on another horse that I owned. And, and uh, it's not like they're really after the blood. It's like they're after an exchange. And so don't be quick to eradicate something that might be trying to help you, I guess is the reason I'm telling you all this stuff. Now a deer fly works from the shoulders and the midsection all the way along between the, 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 all the, say the point of the shoulders and the top of the knees all the way back to the back of the horse. That horse has to keep moving them. I don't know what, what that's all about, but they don't eat enough to worry them. Uh, there are certain flies that for sure bite and are, you know, like I said, these buffalo gnats or the pits, they, they eat a lot and they are vicious. I mean, there's times when them horses just trot around the pasture trying to stay away from them and rub against each other. If you notice when you got two horses in a pasture, you'll have, they'll stand a lot of times head to, to rump and both of them swatting flies at the same time. They're one's keeping the flies off the other one's face and you know, they're off each other's face. And so, we want to try to create that environment as much as we can too, rather than pinning them in their single pins and putting a fly mask on them or whatever. You know, it's just, there's just things that, that sometimes uh, supersede some of the things that we think. And so I, I give you some of this stuff to make you think uh, maybe outside the box a little bit and, and hopefully uh, it, it will shed light on, on the whole picture that the way God intended it and, and we don't get in the way, you know, because sometimes that's the way we do it. Now, uh, I'll step on one more uh, little bit here. Uh, one of the things that, that you see a lot is horses that, that uh, respond and react very adversely to some flies. Some flies, when they bite them, it's cause them to swell up and, and cause them to really itch a lot. And people say, well, that, that my horse is allergic to fly bites. Well, that may or may not be so, but it probably is more that the horse's liver and or immune system is compromised. If that, if that horse is really sensitive to those bites and, you know, swelling up and really getting, uh, the, the injection site is very angry, then you might look at some of that kind of stuff uh, as well, because that's generally what's going on. The immune system's compromised uh, and the liver and or the liver is struggling. The histamines are, are made in the liver and that's, so that's, uh, that's where you've got to help. So anyway, uh, I don't know that I've got anything else that needs to be said. All of the, uh, all of the uh, essential oils that are in our fly sprays are known to be uh, uh, insecticides, if you will. And um, I'll just go across those right quick. What they are, citronella, clove, witch hazel, lemongrass, geranium, eucalyptus, orange, cedar wood, and peppermint. All of those are known uh, to make insects uh, stay back. So 
Anyway, with that, if there's comments or questions. So um, we do have a few questions here, but while we're in the middle of this uh, topic, I want to ask for everybody's help a little bit. Um, and if you have any certain topic that you guys want us to cover, please put it over here in the chats. Um, we, we're constantly trying to come up with, with new ideas, but we'd like to hear from, from you guys because we have a lot of topics that we can talk about. But, you know, you, you guys are the ones watching and we want to be able to share with you guys what you guys want to hear specifically. So um, put it over there in the chat and, and we'll, we'll get to them as soon as we possibly can. But yes, we do have a few questions. Let's start up here. Um, Sean, or, or Tanya has, has a question. Uh, my mares both suffer from sweet itch every summer. What combination is good for that? Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with the liver and the, the immune support on, on sweet itch cases. That's just an indication that the toxins are coming out through the skin. And the skin's the largest ev evacuation organ on the body. And that's when the liver isn't doing its job or can't, doesn't have the pathways open. Uh, uh, then a lot of times it goes back out through the skin and that's where you see the problems. You might, uh, once again, as, as I say that, I think about when you get a horse on liver and they swell up somewhere else, like, so, like anywhere, they can, I've seen them swell up in the ears, I've seen them swell up in the ankles, I've seen them swell up in the chest, wherever. It doesn't matter where the swelling is. Once you start the liver product, if, if, if they swell anywhere, then that's an indicator that the kidneys aren't keeping up with the, uh, uh, the toxins that's been eradicated out of the liver, so. Okay, so I wanna bring up Paula again. She had a, she had a question, I'm gonna ask to unmute her. Uh, my question has to do with picks and more specifically um, Lyme's disease. I grew up in Wisconsin and had many exposures to tick bites and both of my parents actually do have Lyme's and uh, another, uh, it's called ehrlichiosis. And I didn't know what you would recommend to help them combat that instead of having to go to the antibiotics when they have a flare up. The immune support and the INFX, number 24 and number 25. Okay. The only reason they haven't got, gotten over it already is because uh, the immune system is compromised and can't, can't do its own job. So just help okay. it do its job. Our bodies are designed to do all of this stuff, but <clears throat> real off and then, and then real frequently, uh, so frequent often, I'm going to say every time when they're given a shot or antibiotics of some of the of the uh, the other guys, then then that that's uh, pulling down the immune system. The right. very thing that they're trying that needs to happen, they're doing the opposite of. Right. So we need to, we need to get we need to uh, get rid of the infection without pulling down the immune system. Okay. So would you recommend during, like just during tick season that they just stay on the immune support just to keep it? Yeah, and you know, uh, uh, that herbal warmers are a good thing uh, for people to take too, you know, okay. and that will combat, that will make the environment of that tick, you know, uh, I, I rode my four wheeler the other day through some brush and, and some low hanging trees and stuff. And that evening when I was sitting there, on uh, at my reading table, I felt something on the base of my neck and I, I pulled it off and it was a tick. And I got rid of him and, you know, I mean, they're, they're out there. They're always gonna be out there. Right. But uh, he wasn't, he, he was not, he could have stopped somewhere and been dining, but he, he, never, he never felt the need to do that. So if we can keep our vessel as clean as possible, then they're not going to stick around. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They're going to they're Absolutely. going to be on the move. They're always going to be on the move, looking for what does satisfy them. It's just like 
taking this, you'll appreciate this. It's like when you and uh, Brian go to go to dinner somewhere, he'll say, where do you want to eat? And you might drive all around town looking for a place, right? <laughs> but when you find that place, that's where you're going. And right. so that's the same way with these, these uh, insects and so on. They're looking for that perfect place and, you know, okay. a place to get something that sounds good to them. Awesome. So just, just make sure that your body's not that place. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, Jennifer Scribner on Facebook Live had a question, and she says, um, "Have she, she has horses rubbing tops of tails even after deworming with your wormer. Any ideas? Happens every star summer starting about now in central Wyoming. I've used many natural-based soaps to clean often and even put many good oils, uh, such as coconut, neem, argon, et cetera, on the base of the tails? Well, uh, sometimes rubbing their tails is not just an indication of parasites. I mean, sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. It might be that, that, uh, that their skin's just a little bit dry. Our hemp seed coconut oil does an amazing job of keeping the, the hair uh, moist and the skin moist and uh, does a great job that way. But if, if in fact it, it is parasites, uh, our herbal wormer should, should get rid of that. Okay, and then she's got a follow-up question or a second part of this question. It says one mare that lost the first half of her mane years ago and it does not grow back. I have tried everything, thanks. Well, I'd try, I'd, once again, I'd try that hemp seed coconut oil on that too. Uh, now, if, if by chance she's killed them, them that, you know, made a, a uh, scar tissue situation where that mane was, well, it might not ever come back. I don't know that. I, haven't, I can't tell you that. But if we have something that'll help the mane and tail, uh, it's the hemp seed, coconut oil, and, and maybe our feet and bone support. Yeah, and I, and I have a follow-up with that. Um, a little fun fact is, uh, you know, a lot of people are attracted for mane and tail growth along with hoof growth, everything like that, with biotin. Biotin is naturally produced in the hind gut. Our probiotic does a very, very good job of, of supporting that hind gut and and uh, doing the things that we need to do there. So um, when I'm getting horses ready to go to a cell or to some sort of event or anything, all of my horses, because I love long manes, I love long tails. Um, I've got a black horse that I constantly have to chop the end of his tail off because it drags the ground. But uh, they're on probiotics and the hemp seed coconut oil from us. So try that route and, and see what happens there. Um, Let's go on here. Uh, let's see here. Russell and Annette Borg said, can you address summer sores? Yeah, it's, it's the same deal as, you know, immune support and the, and the liver. Okay. Um, we've got a question here from uh, Elaine Dame. Please address hypothyroidism in dogs on, on a future program. That's a, that, that was not a question. That was uh, what she wanted to address. So sorry, I'm just going through these, trying to read them as we go. Um, Tanya says, my mare is experiencing hawk issues. They are currently in the process of fusing. Any way of supporting her with inflammation, pain, and speeding the process along? That could be a future topic as well. So you want to address that right quick? Well, I can, yeah. The, the feet and bone support uh, does a great job of, of strengthening bones, tendons, and ligaments. And real often, in fact, uh, I'm going to say in the high percentage of the time, the kidneys are implicated. Uh, people often ask me, what, why would the kidneys be implicated in a uh, bone and tendon and ligament issue? Well, uh, all of those structures are fibrous and if if uh, like in bones uh, maybe not as evident as it would be in the tendons and ligaments and the muscles but when them 
fibers open up and then you have toxins that get in between those fibers, then they have a tendency to tear rather than, than be elastic. And there, it, the elasticity uh, it goes away. Now, uh, I'm gonna relate this to myself. Uh, here about a month ago, I, I come home from basketball one evening and next morning I was so dang sore. And my shoulders, my shoulders were just really sore and that was kind of uncharacteristic. And so I uh, checked for the uh, kidney support and sure enough, I was, I was needing that. And so I started taking one of those a day and, and I mean, it just disappeared. I, I'm back feeling good again now, but there was a few days when, and so I, I felt it personally uh, and, and this kidney thing is huge. Uh, anybody within the sound of my voice now, I mean, they're, they've put in three new kidney facilities between where we live and Blue Lakes and Twin Falls, which is about 20 miles. And, and they're all full. And people on kidney dialysis and so on, and, and the Western medicine don't even see it until, until it's life-threatening. And I'm telling you, if you learn to understand how this all works, uh, you don't need to go clear to there to just address it way before then. And so I'm going to I'm going to suggest that the kidneys uh, need to be helped in almost all bone, tendon, ligament, muscle issues. So, I mean, I, I've I've been pretty steeped in that subject for the last few years, and and I'm telling you, it's huge. It's huge. So. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that this is all connected? I mean, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the liver and the, and the kidney and, and the immune support. You know, there's so many issues that, uh, that, you know, if we don't take care of these things that can, can happen, and it can happen in, in a lot of different angles and directions. Um, I guess give me, give everybody on here a breakdown of preventative action on a yearly basis of what you do. Yes, right now we're getting into fly season. We're getting into, you know, the bugs and the flies and, and everything, which in a result, if we don't take care of is very taxing on the immune system and drawing that immune system down. So, so what do you do, dad, on a yearly basis, um, I guess seasonally, to stay ahead of the issues before you have a problem? You mean on, on me personally or on my horses and dogs and what? Either, either way. I'll, I'll let you pick. Well, it, I, Chance, Dulce, you guys have both heard me say many times, watch the horse, let them tell you, let them, let them dictate to you what's going on. You can't say this is absolute because it's not absolute. What's going on in my horses may not be going on in Paula's horses or Heidi's horses or Elaine's horses. They're, everybody's horses are different. Every area is different. And so we really do need to learn to to shut up and listen for a change. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I've got pretty good at that. The more butt kickings I've got through my life, the better I've got at listening. And, uh, you know, early on, my dad used to say something to me that stuck with me. I, I re remind myself this oftentimes. I hear him in the back of my mind. I hear these voices, right? And my dad used to say, tend your own netting. And uh, he says, how many ears you got? And I said, two. And he said, how many mouths you got? What? He said, and he said, one. Or I said, one. He says, all right, you listen twice as much as you talk. And, and, and those kind of things come back to me. And I, I think about this, but a horse, a horse speaks to us, whether, uh, and a dog speaks to us, you know, no matter uh, how well we listen, how well we listen determines how, how good we come out the other side. But there are, there are lots of books written about uh, seasons and, uh, you know, traditional Chinese medicine. The better we learn that and the better we understand, you know, how and watch the, life, the wildlife. I mean, you know, the deer and the elk and everything does things certain times of the year. And look, you know, they, they're down low in the wintertime. They're up high in the summertime, not just for the weather but because of the vegetation that grows there. And so volumes have been written about this stuff. Personally, what I do is, if, just like I said, when I'm, when I'm sore or when something makes me sore, I say, whoa, what, what caused that? And I, I start looking for it. 
I don't accept it as uh, norm because I know it's not norm. I, I'm not supposed to be sore. I'm not supposed to be overly tired just because I worked hard. And so I, I, I start, all right, what is it I got to do here? And I, I, I get into my books and I look, you know, if I, if I don't know the answer to something, I go looking for it. But yeah. right now, let me, let me, let me be more specific about what I'm doing right now. Right now, uh, I take a liver, one, uh, one capsule liver a day, one, um, uh, bright eyes, I take a B complex when I sweat a lot, like w when we work out like that, your B, your B complexes are, are being challenged. So I take a B complex. I take uh, uh, a Panix ginseng, which is a whole body uh, herb. They call it the man herb. Uh, and I'll say woman as well. It's people herb. It's a whole person. It's a whole uh, body herb. I take one turmeric. I take uh, uh, one, one immune support. And if I ever feel like uh, I've got wind on the back of my tongue, and maybe there's somebody out there that understands that, but when you inhale, if you feel like a coolness on the back of your tongue, that's, that's an indicator that there may be uh, uh, weakness in the in the immune system. I'll take an, an INFX. Then uh, I take a bone and tendon uh, BTC, bone and tendon cartilage, or bone and joint. One of those a day. I am what I am. Yeah, and I'm one of each of those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and just, you know, for, for years, uh, I kind of caught you there and you caught yourself too on the BTC and the bone and joint, but just so people aren't confused about that, when we when we released our, our people line uh, last year, beginning of last year, what we did is we combined, you know, essentially the 12 feet and bone with the number 18 joint support and made a master mix. So, you know, it takes care of all bones, tendons, ligaments, uh, pr promotes the, the synovial fluid, um, has herbs in there for pain and inflammation, also has herbs in there for the kidneys to get those impurities flushed out of the system. And uh, it, it's, it's an awesome, awesome product. So I highly suggest it to anyone. But, you know, that's one thing that I, I really, really like that you have always said, Dad, and, and, uh, and it translates to me is listen to, is listen to your horse, listen to your body. You know, there's, you know, in today's world, there's so many people that follow, follow trends or, or fads or whatever it might be of, uh, you know, everybody else is doing it. So maybe my horse needs that. That's not, that's not the case. You know, we live in Southern Idaho, you know, somebody that's in Florida or Georgia or somewhere down there, you guys have different issues that are going on that are not going on in our season in, I in Idaho. Whatever that is, listen to your horse and, and make, that, make that call. Um, they don't actually speak words, but they do speak. And so um, we, we wanna empower you to, to, to have that knowledge through these Zoom calls and us giving you the, the, the knowledge to, to be able to listen to your animals and, and be aware of the things that are, are coming to, to mind um, in your everyday lives and to, to, to put those in, into action. Um, so we are getting to the end of the hour here. And, you know, once again, uh, just, just an awesome topic that we talked about today. Just a, it, it's another topic that, that we have never addressed. And, and we like the to hear the knowledge that comes out of your, your brain, dad. And, and we appreciate you being on here as, as always. And, you know, once again, I took a couple of little golden nuggets, chance golden nuggets. Um, they were making fun of me this morning because I have a book from my mentors that I, I say, I'm going to share my nuggets. And they're like, would you quit using the word nuggets? And I said, how about golden nuggets? How about that? So um, yeah, golden nuggets that, that, that we're going to take into our everyday lives and, and use. Um, we have some really cool topics that people have put on here uh, that we're going to talk about and and we will release the first of next week 
what we're going to talk about next week. And uh, one thing that I want to share with you guys is, is don't be afraid to, to, sh to share this, this knowledge that you guys are getting. That is the whole reason that we do this. We want to spread the knowledge of what we have been taught here and that we're continuing to live daily and, and walk around with confidence and knowing that, that you guys have found something super special here. The power of herbs and, and what they can do in your everyday life and, and create a better quality of life for yourself and your animals is truly amazing. And, and we at Silver Lining appreciate every one of you guys being on here and expanding that knowledge uh, and just stopping in and saying hello. We love seeing your guys' faces. So with that being said, it is already the weekend. So I hope everybody has some fun plans this weekend. Uh, maybe it's with your horses, maybe it's with your family. But whatever it is, as always, be safe, be healthy, and be a legend. We'll see you on here next week, everyone. Adios. Thanks, y'all. See you.